All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the limit of a function, introduce the concept of a limit, and some basic stuff dealing with limits. And the reason for doing this is for all the other stuff that's coming up in calculus. Um, so we're going to come next to a big definition, uh, which deals with the property of a function being continuous, and that's going to rely heavily on the limit. Uh, and then the big operations discussed in calculus, the derivative and the integral, those will also be rely on limits as we talk about those, uh, and then all the important applications we want to do um, will have something to do with limits. Uh, for instance, instantaneous velocity uh, will be the limit of the average rate of change of velocity. So uh, limits are very important in calculus, and let's see what it is. I'm going to try to look at limits just from the point of view of looking at their graphs, um, looking for the most common situations when a limit does not exist, and uh, of course, the correct notation and how it's read for limits and then their one-sided counterparts. We're expecting that people understand the basic concept of function, domain and range, all that stuff, uh, as well as the processes for evaluating a function and analyzing the graph of a function. So if you don't know those, you want to go to a previous video. All right, so here we see the basic limit notation. And we've got the LIM, the abbreviation for limit. Uh, your independent variable or function input here, uh, the value that that's approaching, in this case just using a for the arbitrary constant, um, the function here where if we had a specific example we put the right hand side uh, using f of x and, uh, and then l is the limiting value of the function. Uh, if we were to read this, it might say something like the limit of f as x approaches a is l. And the idea behind this is that the x values are getting closer and closer to this number a. And at the same time, if those x values were put into the function, the function outputs, the y values, um, those are getting closer and closer to the number l. If that is the case, uh, as the x values get closer to a, then the f of x values get closer to l, then we have our limit l. Now let's see some example of this notation. So with the notation here for specific example, a would be a specific number. So this is the limit as x approaches 2. Uh, and I have a specific function. I put the right-hand side of that function equation in here, in this case a rational function, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And, uh, and as x approaches 2, the value of the function would approach 4. And we'd say the limit of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 is 4. So what this means is that as x gets closer and closer to 2, the value of the function gets closer and closer to the number 4. All right, let's take a look at a visual graph version of this. So here's a graph of that function, and we're looking at the limit as x approaches 2, and it have a, a mysterious cloud around that specific point, and that's a big part of the limit, is that we not only may not know what's happening at the limit point, but uh, it may not matter. As long as we can get really, really close to it, um, what's happening at the exact point uh, will not matter. So let's uh, take a look at some specifics. So one thing is you don't just take the limit of a function, right? You have to take the limit of a function at a certain point. So notice here it is the limit as x goes to 2. I, for this same function, I could do the limit as x goes to 0 or 5 or any other number that's in the domain or near the domain of the function. So you need a specific x value, and that's that a, that's the number the arrow is pointing to in the limit notation. The next thing is to think when you're looking at these graphs that you are traveling along that line, right? That the straight line or that curve that defines the function's graph. In this case, it's the red straight line, and that you are headed towards that spot in question, uh, the mysterious cloud spot there. Um, now, you can actually approach that from either side, right? This is a, an infinite line, it's an infinite curve, and so you can hit that from the left or from the right. Um, and so that's where we get into the idea of one-sided limits. If I were to come at this point from the left, then I'm coming at it from the left side of the number line where the negative numbers are. And so we put a little negative above the two, kind of like a negative exponent, but it's just the negative sign there. And that lets you know that you're doing a left limit. So a one-sided limit from the left would be represented by that blue arrow. Uh, we can do the same thing headed from the right, right? And so the right side of the number lines where the positive numbers are, we use a little plus sign as an exponent on the two to indicate coming from the right, so the right one-sided limit there. And what we need is we need these two one-sided limits to agree. They have to be headed towards the same point or the limit overall will not exist. So we need the one-sided limits to agree. 
Uh, and then here we get to the kicker is that the point actually does not have to match where you are headed. So the value of the function at the point could be something different as long as we were headed towards the same place as we approached it from both sides. Now, uh, one possibility is that everything is nice and smooth and connected, and in that case, um, the value of the function is equal to the limit point. Okay, so that's good. But there's two other common possibilities that could throw things off. One is there's just a hole there. Uh, and so here, heading from the left and heading from the right, you're still headed towards fun, four. And so the limit of the, fu of the function as x approaches two is four. Uh, but the value of the function at 2 is undefined. f of 2 is undefined here, right? There's, there's no uh, point in there, and so 2 is not technically in the domain, but we can get as close as we want. Right? Remember that idea, as, as, you, as x gets closer and closer to 2, so we can get as close as we want to 2, uh, and we're headed towards 4. Now you can also have the function be defined, but it's defined at some other value. So there's a hole there, and then we have a point directly above or below that. So now the value of the function f of 2 is actually 2, right? When x is 2, then, then the function is 2. Um, but that doesn't matter, because if you're headed along this line, you would be headed towards 4. And so you notice how I said earlier that the value of the point doesn't have to match the limit. Uh, those show you examples why. So those all three functions um, look very similar. And uh, you have to be careful with graphs with using technology, because you may not be able to see those holes or those points above and below. Um, and so you have to be careful as you try to determine these limits. But then all cases have the limit equal to 4. Now, that kind of covers how we can find the limit and how the point is in effect, but what about things that could throw this whole thing off? So when the limit does not exist, um, we have some common uh, reasons why. And so we want to look at some sort of case studies. The first situation, remember we said that the left and right one-sided limits had to agree? Uh, well, we're looking at this function here uh, with the two pieces. Um, as you approach from the left, you're headed along this sinusoidal curve and you head towards zero. Okay, that's fine. That the one-sided left limit is equal to zero. But as you head from the right, that right-sided limit, you head towards that hole at two. And since those left and right hand limits don't agree, the limit overall does not exist. So we would just say that the limit uh, notice here, there is no plus or minus the limit overall of f as x approaches 0, d and e, or does not exist. So that's one situation that could come up as those one-sided limits are not agreeing. Another situation is that we just can't get close to the point in question. So looking at this function, uh, we want to find the limit as x goes to 0, but I can't really get close to 0. Remember the idea of a limit. As x gets closer and closer to 0, the y values get closer and closer to what? Well, I can't get any closer than negative 2, so I can't really do my job to do the limit here. In fact, if you look at the individual left and right hand limits, um, they don't exist because I can't get close to 0. So neither of those limits existing, um, you know, even though they sort of match, they have to both equal a real number, and those have to be the same number for this to be defined. So overall here, uh, the limit does not exist. All right, well, this is another similar situation. Um, where we have something happening with the left and right hand limits agreeing but not equaling a real number, and that is an asymptote. So as you head towards zero on this graph, you go off to positive infinity from both sides. And even though the left and right hand limits both kind of agree as shooting off to infinity, um, the way we've set up a limit right now is that the limit L is supposed to be some real number. So uh, what happens is two things. One is people will say here, then since we're not approaching a single specific real number, that the limit does not exist. Um, the other thing is people will actually write that the limit is equal to infinity. Now you have to be careful with that because it is kind of an informal notation and you need to explain what you mean by that, um, but some books will jump in and, and sort of interpret that. Uh, we're going to save that for later. For right now we're just going to say that the limit does not exist um, and talk about infinite limits at a later time. The last case we want to look at is where the function is bounded, so it's not going off to infinity, um, but we can't get closer and closer to anything. So this is an interesting function, sine of 1 over x. As x gets close to 0, um, then this frequency of this sine function starts going crazy really fast, oscillating, and so you're bouncing back and forth between negative 1 and 1, and as x gets closer to 0, f of x does not get close to anything. It keeps moving up and down, oscillating. Uh, infinitely as you get close there. 
So since the function can't actually settle or get closer to a single value, um, there is no limit. We say the limit does not exist. So those are the main reasons. Now you can have other situations where a limit does not exist, but those are the most common ones to be aware of as you start to form this paradigm in your head of what a limit is. Um, and let's just sort of recap what we learned and then look at our next steps. So overall idea here, just the conceptual idea, uh, is that as x gets closer and closer to this number a, the values of the function, f of x, your y values, those should get closer and closer to some number l. That the value f of a, so actually at the point when x equals a, the value of the function there does not have to match the limit. Remember, it could be a hole there, if so it may not exist, or it could be above or below that. The limit would still be equal to l to where that hole is, as long as you can get as close to it as you want. Now, if you have a big gap there, right, then you can't get as close. So it has to be just a single point taken out of the domain um, or moved for that to make sense. Um, but that one individual value can be different. The left and right hand limits must agree, so we have to be headed towards the same point as we approach from the left or right side. And the values can agree and head towards infinity, uh, and some people may even write that the limit is equal to infinity, um, but in general, if we're talking about this definition of a limit being a, a value for a real number L, um, right now that still does not exist as a number. Infinity not a number, more of a concept of not having an upper bound. Now, where would you be headed next with this? You'd want to use tables and equations, the other two ways of looking at functions, to analyze these basic ideas of a limit. Then we want to introduce the formal definition of a limit and see how that matches up with all the examples and how we can use that to evaluate limits. Um, and then ultimately, limit is the building blocks for all those other great things. So we'd want to go on to the continuity of a function and define continuous using limits. Um, and of course, interpret these limits we sort of shrugged aside right now as limits as x approaches infinity or the limits when f of x approaches infinity. All right, thank you very much.